sir, it's an honor to have you. Please come. I welcome Mr. Sudhindra Kulkarni. Vikram Patel ji, Mrs. Savita Venkat, school leaders, friends. Good morning to all of you. Belated uh, New Year greetings and also Makar Sankranti greetings two days in advance. I thank the Bombay Cambridge International School for inviting me to participate in this two-day school leaders convention. I also thank BCG, uh, one of the organizers of the convention. My hearty compliments to the Bombay Cambridge International School for completing 25 years of excellence in education and the sister institution, Bombay Cambridge Gurukul, which has completed 30 years. May you continue this tradition of excellence, not only for the next 25 or 30 years, not only for the next 100 years, but for the next many centuries. Why do I say this? Because you have Cambridge in your name. Cambridge is known all over the world because of Cambridge University. And I'm sure many of you know that Cambridge University was founded in 1209. 1209. In 2009, the university celebrated its 800th anniversary. It has survived for 808 years and achieved a reputation as not only one of the world's oldest universities, but also one of the best universities. How did it achieve this feat? Because it remained faithful to the pursuit of excellence. Excellence in the dissemination of knowledge, but also excellence in the creation of new knowledge. Cambridge has produced 90 Nobel Prize winners so far, and it ranks third in the world among all the universities and institutes with most Nobel laureates, Harvard and Columbia being the first and the second. Of course, US is a school, not a university. Nevertheless, if you have pursuit of excellence in education as your motto, and if you strive in a sincere, sustained, and innovative manner, you are bound to gain both longevity and national, international reputation. Distinguished teachers and educators, the overarching theme of this convention has greatly appealed to me. Advancing education with principles. Now, here is a question. What will happen if we advance education without principles? If we advance education without principles? The answer can be found in the seven deadly sins listed by Mahatma Gandhi. The seven deadly sins. Wealth without work, pleasure without conscience, knowledge without character, commerce without ethics, science without humanity, religion without sacrifice, politics without values. We see here that Gandhiji has not used education in this list of seven sins, the importance of education. He has talked about wealth, pleasure, knowledge, commerce, science, religion, and politics, but not education. I was wondering why Gandhiji did not make any explicit reference to education. After all, he was a profound thinker and also practitioner when it came to education. Most of you know that he founded the Nai Talim system of education, new education or basic education. On closer examination, it occurred to me that Mahatma Gandhi underscored the presence of education by deliberately keeping it absent. When something very important is not explicitly mentioned, we tend to realize its importance better. It is Zen philosophy. 
seeing everything in nothing. Sometimes silence is more audible than words. As a matter of fact, education without principle is at the root of all the seven sins and it is at the root of all the problems and ills that our society is facing today. Wealth without work leads to laziness and irresponsible behavior. Pleasure without conscience leads to self-destructive conduct. Knowledge without character leads to dangerous consequences. Commerce without ethics leads to inequities and injustice in society. Science without humanity is the cause of much of violence in our society. Religion without sacrifice leads to hypocrisy. And politics without values, all of us know friends, leads to corruption. If we have education with principles, you know, education without principle leads to all these problems and ills. But if we have education with principles, it leads to peace, prosperity, and happiness for all. Therefore, if we want to envision and create a world without these sins, without these problems, we have to pay attention to the theme of your conference, advancing education with principles. Now, the question arises, what are the principles of education? I shall try to present my thoughts by referring to the mottos of the two institutions where I received my formal education. The first was my school, Jadhoji Anandji High School in Athani, a very small town in Karnataka. A very, very modest school, nothing as modern as the Bombay Cambridge International School, but a very good school nonetheless. The motto of my school was Sa Vidya Ya Vimuktaye. Sa Vidya Ya Vimuktaye. A Sanskrit maxim from the Vedas, which means that is real learning which helps one to secure liberation of the soul. I later studied at the Indian Institute of Technology, Bombay. And the motto of IIT Bombay was again a maxim in Sanskrit. Jnanam paramam dhyayam. Seeking knowledge is the highest ideal. Yet, yes, these are lofty principles of education. Learning for the liberation of the soul and seeking knowledge as the highest ideal of life. These are no doubt highly relevant. Even though students may not understand their meaning, and I can confess that I did not understand their meaning when I was a student, teachers should certainly reflect upon them. But in understanding the principles of education, we need to climb down a little from the spiritual heights of these two mottos and understand education in the context of here and now. What are the principles schools should advance in the realities of our society's needs and also the aspirations of students and their parents? All of us are well aware of the aspirations of students and their parents. We are also aware of society's needs that need to be fulfilled through education. So the challenge before all of us is, can we have a system of education that addresses the needs of society, aspirations of students and their parents, and also the higher ideals of the liberation of the soul? Actually, this is what our ancient rishis had been contemplating. There is a shloka in the Rig Veda which encapsulates this threefold purpose of education. Atmano Mukshartham Jagadhitaya. Uh, Mrs. Venkat mentioned Swami Vivekananda and today's Vivekananda Jayanti, and this particular shloka was very, very dear to him. Atmano Mukshartham. It means education for the salvation of our individual self and also for the well being of all the living beings in our world. 
This wise thought is not exclusive to the Vedas or to the Hindu tradition. We can find such wisdom about the purpose of education in all religions, in all cultures, and in all civilizations around the world. In modern times, and I again refer to Swami Vivekananda, Swamiji defined the principles and purpose of education in these illuminating words. I quote, we want that education, we want that education by which character is formed, strength of mind is increased, the intellect is expanded, by which a student can stand on one's own feet, and which, apart from man-making, also promotes nation-building, unquote. Esteemed teachers, these are the eternal principles of education. This is the eternal mission of education. Now, what is the role of India's schools in achieving this mission? How can India's schools pursue these principles? These questions lead me to the theme of my keynote address, and it is a theme chosen by the organizers of the convention. It is leading India's schools into the future. Leading India's schools into the future. First, a disclaimer. I'm not an educationist. I'm not a teacher either. However, I'm deeply interested in education and in the art and science of learning. At the Observer Research Foundation, our researchers have done a lot of work in the area of school education, college education, university education, research and development in our labs, and so on. And this is perhaps the reason for the organizers to invite me at this convention. As far as I'm concerned, I regard myself as a lifelong student, a lifelong learner. In this, I have been inspired by a profound saying of Mahatma Gandhi. He says, friends, please, uh, this is truly profound. He says, live as if you're going to die tomorrow. Live as if you're going to die tomorrow. Learn as if you're going to live forever. Live as if you're going to die tomorrow. Learn as if you're going to live forever. And here, you know, I was highly impressed by this beautiful song sung by your, your, your students in which they say, we are the teachers and students forever. I compliment both the students and the teachers who have taught them this song. The same message, the same thought, Gandhiji conveyed in other words, learn for life, learn about life, learn through life, and learn throughout life. It means that we should keep on learning new things until the last day of our lives. As a matter of fact, Gandhiji himself was learning Bengali language on the last day of his life. Just hours before his assassination, he was brushing up his Bengali. He had learned Urdu, a little bit of Tamil, Marathi, and several other languages. The point I'm trying to make is this. Our process of education must continue long after we have, we have left the portals of our colleges and universities. This is especially important in today's age when the internet and other digital tools have made it possible for everyone to pursue lifelong learning, anytime learning, anywhere learning, and any subject learning. And today, many students, I'm sure you have experienced this, many students know much more than their teachers because of the tools of the digital revolution available to them. And friends, this trend is going to become stronger and broader in the years and decades to come. I can see that in the next session, you're going to have a panel discussion on 
how artificial intelligence and online learning tools are reshaping education forever. A very important subject. More scientific knowledge has been created in the last 50 years than in the last 5,000 5, years. And perhaps more scientific knowledge will be created in the next 10 years than in the last 50 years. Therefore, teachers should keep themselves abreast of the new advances in various fields of knowledge. I do not think, however, that artificial intelligence, machine learning, e-education, etc., will ever replace good teachers and make them redundant. However, the role, of, role and responsibilities of teachers will definitely undergo some basic changes in the future. Therefore, teachers should, be, should make themselves future ready. My dear teachers, when we think of leading India's schools into the future, I think first we should think of what kind of future we want for India. Again, it is not enough to think of what kind of future we want for India. We should also think of what kind of future we want for the world. The future of India and the future of the world are inseparable. This is because of two reasons. One, we live today in the age of globalization. The world is far more interdependent and interconnected than ever, ever before. But it's true also because India has always believed that the entire world is one family. Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam. So here are my views. First about the future of the world and then about the future of India and how schools can promote this future. The future world we want, the world which we would like our children and future generations to live in is one and should be one without wars and violence. A future without wars and violence. The 20th century witnessed two horrific world wars which killed millions of people. There were also many other wars, small and big. The 21st century in which we live, the 21st century simply cannot afford to have any more world wars. It is rightly said that if there is a third world war, there will not be a fourth world war. This is because of the stark reality of nuclear weapons. Therefore, our school should impart first and foremost peace education. Our children should grow up as soldiers of peace. Peace is a very profound concept. I'm not referring to peace only in the context of wars among nations. It's global, local, as well as interpersonal. So schools have a responsibility, teachers have a responsibility to teach peace in a very comprehensive and holistic manner. Second, precisely because we are living in an interconnected, interdependent world, friends, schools have a responsibility to make our children aware of all the cultures, all the religions, all the civilizations of the world without prejudices. We grown-ups, we have a lot of prejudices about the so-called other people. And our prejudices, as all of us know, about our own neighbors are very intense. So if we want a better world for our children, school should teach them to respect all faiths, all cultures, and have a curiosity to know about others. And here I would especially like to point out, it was mentioned that I am an activist for peace and friendship between India and South Asia. I would like therefore especially mention the need for removing prejudices between India and Pakistan, India and China. I believe friends that if we, if India improves its relations with Pakistan, with China, and of course, even our neighbors have a big responsibility to make it happen. 
India will become a great nation, a great power, a great global power. Here I would like to mention that there are many school children, both in India and Pakistan, which have been promoting this education of peace and goodwill. Just tomorrow in Delhi, there is going to be a function when, where uh, an organization called Agaze Dosti, you will find it in the social media, they are launching a peace calendar, a peace calendar in which each leaf carries paintings by children, school children in India, school children in Pakistan. Now this is the kind of goodwill understanding that all schools should promote. Now coming to India, the future of India and how schools should play a role, I would say one, that schools must promote national unity. Schools must promote patriotism. For some people, patriotism unfortunately has become a, a bad word, but I believe that patriotism is a, is a very important virtue. India's future rests on India's unity. Unit, India's unity and India's unity in diversity. Therefore, our children should know about our diversity as well as the imperative of unity. The second important thing that school should promote is fellow feeling. We are a deeply divided society, divided by not only social factors but also economic factors. With all the new prosperity we are seeing in India, the gulf between the rich and the poor is widening. And this also reflects in the school system. I'm sure that the students who come to your, your kind of schools are very, very different from children who go to municipal schools, government schools. And this division is also causing either absence of fellow feeling or very weak fellow feeling. Friends, this is not good for India. The India of future has to be an India of equal opportunities. And this must be inculcated among children. And this is the responsibility of educators, teachers. We must break class barriers. We must make our children rebel against the inequities and injustice in our society. Thirdly, you know, it is about learning. You know, learning is not just imparting knowledge or information. Every school should echo with the excitement of learning. You know, how we teach children is even more important than what we teach. Learning, how they learn depends on, you know, it, it actually determines how they continue to learn throughout their lives. So learnability is what needs to be taught and not just some information for examinations. I come therefore to the last point of my keynote and that is, friends, we, should, we all should be very optimistic about the future. The future is going to be very bright for our children and for the future generations. Firstly, because of technology and the subject that you're going to discuss in the next session is going to transform the world in ways that we cannot even imagine today. Artificial intelligence, machine learning, all that comes under the fourth industrial revolution. It's going to transform the world in very, very fundamental ways and we should create a new generation that is ready to reap the benefits of technology. But we can only do so, as was pointed out by Mrs. Venkat, we can only do so if we are strongly spiritually grounded. If we carry the wisdom of the past, the wisdom of our cultures, the wisdom of our religions, the wisdom of our civilizations. So if we marry 
the wisdom of the past with the power of new technologies india is going to be a very very beautiful prosperous peaceful nation and can impart this message to the rest of the world thank you very much dhanyawad jai hind jai jagat